Writing and Balancing Chemical Equations. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about chemical equations. First, we're going to talk about how to write them, and then after that, we're going to talk about how to balance them, which is a very important skill in chemistry. Um, in general, chemical reactions express chemical change. So if we want to say that hydrogen reacts with oxygen to make water, we could write it more compactly like this in words. So hydrogen plus oxygen gives us water. The plus in this sense means that these two are reacting together, and the arrow means that this is the product that is produced. Now, there can be more than one product in a chemical reaction, but in this case, there's only one product. Okay, so, um, so let's look at um, how we can write this using chemical formulas. So we've talked a lot about chemical formulas for various substances and how to interpret those, and now we're going to actually use that. So hydrogen and oxygen are both diatomic molecules, so this is how they exist naturally in their elemental form. So H2 plus O2 gives us H2O, which is the chemical formula for water. Uh, this is an example of a chemical equation. In, this, in our chemical equation, reactants are on the left side, and these guys react with each other, and products are on the right side. And that's what is produced in the reaction. Now, we might think that we're finished with this equation, but we are not. Um, we have a situation where oxygen is destroyed in the reaction, and the law of conservation of matter says that that can't happen. And so when I say that, I'm just kind of joking around, but really what it means is there's two oxygens on this side and only one oxygen on that side, so where did the other oxygen go? And um, in a proper chemical equation, we can't have that situation. We have to have everything balanced. So now we're going to talk about how to balance chemi chemical equations. So when we balance, basically at the end of the process, we're going to have the same number of atoms of each element in the reactants as we have in the products. So for instance, we have two hydrogens in the reactants. We have two hydrogens in the products. So just to remind you, so the subscript 2 just means that there are two of those. Okay, so two hydrogens on each side. We go here to oxygen, we have two oxygens, but on this side we only have one oxygen. So we need to fix that problem. Now, this is just a caution. You cannot change the subscripts. Sometimes it's very tempting to just add a subscript so for instance, if we put a 2 after this oxygen, yes, the equation would be balanced, but we would have taken our water and turned it into hydrogen peroxide. So that's actually a big problem. We can't do that. So we have to keep our mitts off of the subscripts. We can't change the subscripts. We have to use coefficients instead. Now, what is a coefficient? Coefficient is a number in front of the compound in the equation. Right now, all of the coefficients are assumed to be 1 in this equation. We don't write the 1 explicitly. We just, it's just implicit. It like So 1 H2 molecule, 1 O2 molecule reacts to produce 1 H2O molecule. Now, uh, we can change those coefficients, though. That is allowed. So let's go ahead and balance our oxygen first. So we have two oxygens on the reactant side, as we've mentioned. If we add a 2 coefficient in front of the H2O molecule, then 2 times 1 is going to give us two oxygens on the product side of the reaction. And so that's perfect. Now, we do not now have the same number of hydrogens. So you see that? So 2 times 2, that's 4 hydrogens on the product side and only two hydrogens on the reactant side. So this is an issue. Now we have to add another coefficient. So we can fix that by adding a two coefficient in front of our hydrogen. And then we're going to have four on each side. So let's do that on the next slide. Okay, so here is our two. So now we have four hydrogens plus two oxygens gives us four hydrogens and two oxygens. So now our chemical equation is balanced. And so like I say, this is kind of a uh, tricky skill, but 
when you get used to it, it actually becomes quite simple to do. So you just have to practice. So let's do a little bit of that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the chemical equation first for the reaction that's written, and then we're going to balance it. And so, um, so pause the video and write out the chemical reaction for each one of these, the chemical equation, and then balance it, and then we'll go through the answers. Okay, so let's start with hydrogen and chlorine react to make hydrogen chloride. Uh, so what we're going to do is write the uh, equation in terms of the formulas of the substances. Now, elemental hydrogen and elemental chlorine are both diatomic molecules. So we're just going to remind ourselves of our diatomics. So H2 plus Cl2 is going to give us HCl. Now when we look at this, we can see that we have two hydrogens and two chlorines, but only one hydrogen and one chlorine on the product side. So this equation is not balanced. So we have to look at the coefficients and see what we can do to balance the equation. So if we have two of this, two hydrogen, two chlorine, then we can add a two coefficient in front of HCl, and now we have two times one, so that's two hydrogens and two chlorines. So the last thing we're going to do is count up the number of each type of atom in the reactant and product side and make sure it's balanced. So two and two of each one. So that equation is balanced, and that is totally awesome. So let's do the next one. This guy is actually a little bit harder. Um, so what we're going to do is take ethane, so that's C2H6, and we're going to react it with oxygen. We're going to make carbon dioxide and water. So let's start by writing this chemical equation. So here's our ethane. Here's our oxygen. Remember, that's a diatomic. We're going to write carbon dioxide, so carbon with two oxygens, and then, of course, water. Now, this can be a little bit tricky to balance. And so what you want to do is, you know, use a strategy where you're starting with the least common element. So, for instance, carbon only shows up in one compound on each side of the equation. So that makes it easy to deal with first. Okay, so let's do that first. And then we'll go to the hydrogens, and I'll tell you why next. So, we're looking here and we see we have two carbons on the reactant side, so C2. We go over here and see carbon dioxide, and we don't have any carbon here, so we only have one on this side. So, literally the only thing that we can do is put a 2 coefficient in front of carbon dioxide. We have to do it. So, we're going to just go ahead and do that, and we'll deal with the oxygens later. Okay, so let's go to hydrogen next. Now, why didn't I go to oxygen? Well, oxygen is alone on the reactant side, and so that actually makes it really easy to just balance at the end. But um, hydrogen is not alone. So let's go ahead and go to hydrogen next. Um, we have six hydrogens on the, um, on the reactant side, and we only have two hydrogens on the product side. So what we can do is add a 3 coefficient in front of the water, okay? So 6, 3 times 2 is 6. So now the hydrogens are balanced. Now, as I mentioned, oxygen is alone on the uh, reactant side, so that makes it easy to balance at the very, very end. Basically, we can count up the oxygens we have here, and then we can just add a coefficient, and we're done. There's only one little wrinkle in what I just said. And that is, we have an, an odd number of oxygens on this side, and we only have, we can only have, you know, pairs of two because oxygen is a di diatomic molecule. So we'll deal with that in a second. So two times two, so there's four oxygens plus another three oxygens, so that's seven oxygens. Now, if we put a seven in front of this O2, that's going to make it 14. And um, obviously, that's not seven. So what we're going to do is put, basically, we're going to double the coefficients in front of every single other compound except for oxygen. So let's go ahead and put a 4 in front of carbon dioxide. So now that's 4 carbons, 8 oxygens, 12 hydrogens, and 6 oxygens on, on the product side. 
we go over here, we have a two here because we have to balance our carbons again. So two times two, four. Two times six is 12. We go over here and we have 12 hydrogens, so we're all good. Now, let's go ahead and count up our oxygens again. So four times two, eight, plus another six, that's gonna give us 14. So now if we put a seven in front of O2, then that's gonna give us 14 oxygens on the reactant side. So once we add our seven coefficient here, then let's go ahead and check everything again. Two times two is four for our carbons. Two times six is 12 for our hydrogens. And we have 14 oxygens. So let's do the same thing here. So let me check, we have four carbons. We have eight oxygens plus six oxygens, that's seven, uh, 14. And then finally our hydrogens, we have 12. So we've determined that everything is balanced. We have the same number of each type of element on both sides of the equation. Okay, now just keeping in mind as a summary, our chemical equation is a concise description of a chemical reaction. So very, very handy. Proper chemical equations are always balanced. Now you'll wanna practice balancing chemical equations because as you saw in the previous example, it can be a bit, a bit tricky. There are plenty of examples in your textbook and plenty of examples in the homework. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, and it is a central skill in chemistry, so you'll wanna make sure that you're really good at it.